resistances, but just lacking a little bit in the collection and the activity. And uh, I see in the warm-up they were working on that. It looked absolutely super in the warm-up for the few minutes I saw it. So it'll be with great interest to watch this perfectly motionless, beautiful attitude directly into trot with this beautiful uphill feeling. And I just, there's something about him that just gives me this, oh, you've got to be careful. She's very lucky that the light is, <laughs> I shouldn't make excuses, the light is really difficult to judge him because you're in and out of light and shadow and light shadow. It looks, it makes it look a little jerky. And he, for me, I think it was James too close to being overridden. It, it, great activity and an angle in the half pass but again you know with a little bit more time and a little more development of some more cadence and this way it's a little struggling it looks a, a little tense and along with the tension there's a little degree of lack of evenness and quality in the sideways steps transition to halt dead square one two three Five, a little against the right leg and unfortunately right in front of the judge every time he's ground his teeth he ground his teeth quite loudly in front of the judge but there's a fine line between overriding some of the horse's natural pace and uh, super into passage the extended trot sometimes maybe lacks a little suppleness and fluency it's a little bit stiff looking but still great extended now come under she got him under this time and you can see that he has a PRF in there that is going to be fantastic like there is no question that the development of that is going to be great but to develop a super PRF at his standard like that when he's doing it there not totally established but really going for it and then to make your transition that is not easy really good job and good riding and each Grand Prix test that you ride with a horse of this level it's important that you develop a rapport and an understanding of coming into each movement. And if the test before they were lazy in that movement, then you need to say, you're not allowed to be lazy here. So that's a little bit about how she rode her day after yesterday, it not being quite so good. And it was very well done. Again, a little bit of teeth grinding, but it's like people that twiddle with their hair when they're concentrating. Some horses, a little bit of teeth grinding, whoopsie, a little bit not half halted in the collector walk and the hind leg under enough in that transition, but now it's, whoa, holy, yeah, that's great. And you can see again, just trying a little hard, but yeah, and again, trying a little hard is not easy. She's doing a great job, but maybe, a a little less might be a little bit more of a mark. Now, passage canter, and again, not easy. I still love him. He can make little mistakes for me, and I still think that he's uh, along the right way and showing a very good acceptance of training. The little mistakes he make is from trying a little too hard, maybe. Oops. The, the changes are, are correct and vary from the back to the front and in a really nice way and straight, but they just lack a little of that uphill feeling and a really expressive front leg like, like Carlisle, or, I mean not Carlisle, I mean um, Campion or Nevada or those horses have this really, or, or even Silvia to a certain degree, a little bit more natural front leg and it's it's in all the movements like in the flying change when it comes across here it doesn't really lift the knee way up and the shoulders up but that's not necessarily the, only the training it's the way the horse naturally does that movement and it just wouldn't be really nice to see more shoulders and front legs up and out in the changes i think the ones have been a little tricky Oh, I 
think that was a mistake, yeah. 13 and then a mistake. But, you know, I was saying what, what you do is he, he doesn't have a 10 natural way of making one-time changes, but she rides them for a 10 in the correctness, the straightness, the line was dead straight. She went straight from M to K. You know, it's the way that you ride the movement and position the horse in that movement that will gain you marks. The pirouette was a little bit not centred and lacked a little bit. This, for me, is a little bit better. You can see, in, in when he sits in that can of pirouette to the right, you can see the front leg and the shoulders come way up. And the more collection develops, the more you'll find those half pass and the flying chains will become more and more like that canter pirouette feeling with the, with the shoulders. And in the extension, he certainly can get those shoulders and front legs up and out of the way and very, the very clean hind leg that leaves the ground in a great way but remains under his body. It's impressive, huh? Seriously impressive horse. And beautifully ridden. You know, not once in this whole performance have I been drawn to looking at the rider and that's really, you know, absolutely of huge importance. And Daniela, who's blinded by the sun right this minute, Daniela is such a, a, a beautifully balanced rider. She's a young rider with a huge amount of talent, genetic or not, it's there, and always looks great on a horse and is the nicest person. Well done, Daniela. Super job. And you know, she's thinking, as she walks out, she'll be thinking about herself, about the things that went wrong and that says the things that were right, the things that were better, the thing that she needs to work on tomorrow and the next day, the things she needs to work on at home to produce a better test the next time she comes out. And that's what it's about. It's not just a physical game, it's truly a mental.